Thomas Sanu gets the snap and he bobbles the ball and Sanu fires it in the air and down there is Julio Jones and Jones is there for the touchdown. Saving it up Friday night with the Sultan. Welcome to the first December episode of the Let Bye Weeks Be Bye Weeks podcast with your very own Sultans of Swing, Tom Matthews and Michael Jinx. How are you doing, Mike? Very well, thanks, Tom. Happy to be here. It's a, uh, a late night version of the podcast. Yeah, it is, yeah. Burning the midnight oil. Indeed. <laughs> and uh, and a few teams find themselves in dire straits, should we say. They do, Tom. They yeah. do indeed. Uh, I believe Bill Belichick said uh, the football season begins after Thanksgiving. As uh, As with a lot of things, he says, it tends to be... Unfortunately, correct. Yes, tends to be written to the folklore of the NFL, and, and people regurgitate these sayings. But certainly, some of these teams we're going to discuss uh, do find themselves <laughs> looking down the barrel of a gun coming into this month. Yeah, no, you've got some, you've got some, um, some coaching staffs um, under the under the gun now, uh, looking under the pump. I should say, sorry, looking looking yep. under pressure. Um, and there, I mean, pretty soon. I mean, it's how many, how many weeks now? Three or four weeks. We're going to find. We're going to start seeing the first people being sacked, GMs potentially being sacked, um, and obviously teams as well making it and qualifying for the playoffs. So yeah. all to play for down the straight. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to do a bit of a quarterback carousel uh, for this episode. It's something a little bit different to what we normally do. This will tie into what we've been speaking about, but. Um, I mean, mainly it's to uh, tell everyone about our undying love and affection for Jay Cutler. Yeah, the the the, the sulky one himself. I mean, if, uh, if if Jose Mourinho is the special one, Jay Cutler's the sulky one, and um, I think you and me both appreciate him for it. Yes, and uh, there was no better sulking done by Cutler than the NFC Championship game of 2010, uh, when the Packers went to the Bears, and Cutler seemed to pick up some sort of mystery injury that no one's really sure what was, uh, something to do with his knee apparently, and there was a shot of him on the exercise bike um, <laughs> after leaving the game, casually with his hands in his pockets, just uh, leisurely having a bit of a pedal on the exercise bike. Whilst his team crashed out of the playoffs. Yeah, l- in looking, fashion. Yeah, looking quite macabre is, is <laughs> the way that only Jay does. I mean, and made... I, I think that was the... the the moment that really endeared Jay Culler to, to both of us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just ridiculous. He just, it's basically what I love about him is he's, he doesn't give a toss. Yeah, I mean, he's perfected <laughs> the art of turning up for a paycheck. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, he made, getting he, by on pure talent. He made yeah. Troy Aikman angry on the broadcast. <laughs> Troy Aikman was like obviously a multiple Super Bowl winning quarterback. Just he's like, I, I don't understand why he's not in the game. <laughs> It does. Oh, it was, it was uh, because he doesn't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, so Jay Cutler went to Vanderbilt and famously led Vanderbilt to a victory over SEC powerhouse Tennessee back in the day, uh, which led someone to make the comment that if this kid can lead a bunch of lawyers and medics to beat Tennessee, I can't wait to see what he does in the NFL. And you gotta love college heroics like that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's why we we love the college game. And I have to say, Jay Cutler's made a decent career. Out of uh, you know physical talents and past exploits. <laughs> well, that, I mean, it, basically, he, he he has one of the most incredible arms that's ever come into the NFL. Mm. Like gifted, a gifted thrower, genuinely. Yeah. But I think that in his mind, that means I don't have to work at it, and I don't have to do any kind of preparation or try. I'm just going to sling it. Yeah. And <laughs> and I, I, Brett Favre, I think there's a. Did, it was a similar attitude, but he was just obviously a lot better at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, it was like in the combine uh, for the draft, Cutler benched the most a quarterbacks ever benched on the reps. He had 23 reps of 225 pounds. Really, I didn't know that. Uh, yep. Um, also ran a 4.7, so he's a perfect fit, really, when Shanahan drafted him into that system for the Broncos back in the day. Uh, yeah. The Shanahan's perfect quarterback. Yeah, but running those, those um, play-action bootlegs, nakeds, 
uh, ELC team that were Brandon Marshall. That was like a that was a big love in there. Uh, that that's another thing that stands out to me about Jay Cutler is that magical relationship he had with Brandon Marshall, where that's... another very difficult character himself. They yeah. were like the only two people that liked each other. The other yeah. one, like they they, yeah. they they just had this like special bond. <laughs> It was great, which has now turned sour. Yeah, I know, yeah. They haven't spoken to each other for two years. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I mean, Jay Cutler is probably one of, if not the most polarizing figures in the NFL. Um, and yeah, so was another hilarious moment was his uh, spat with Philip Rivers, or his many spats with Philip Rivers back in the day. Uh, the, two, the two would just indulge in shouting matches across the field. Uh, A lot of Phil Rivers finger jabbing at that uh, yeah. the opposition bench the Denver Broncos bench yeah. <laughs> gesticulating <laughs> finger jabbing yeah. provoking yeah and uh, really great, Jay, great TV yeah I mean really great Jay Keller is, I mean he's continued to provide us with um, examples of just pure lethargic behaviour being rewarded uh, <laughs> he was given a 10 million dollar contract by the Miami Dolphins to come out of the booth and uh, I think he's missed about three games this season due to injury and he just literally, he just looks like he doesn't care. Yeah. He just, he, he's got, he, he's got a look on his face that says sometimes, I just, I, you've, I've taken the money. Yeah. You gave me the money. What, what do you expect? Yeah. Like he, like they, like they're stupid to have expected it <laughs> anymore. Yeah. Like they should have known he would rip them off. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, yeah, culminating in his appearance at Wembley this year, where we went to see him, and the Dolphins came out in a wildcat formation. Yeah. Um, and Jay Cutler. Basically trying just, to sell the action yeah, yeah. that they would throw it to him. Yeah. Well, all the other ten guys were. Yeah. Jay Cutler was not. No, he was. Uh, there was no way. around at wide receiver. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, mean, I don't think they even bothered covering him. The same. So they just left no. him there because there's what is he? What is he going to do? <laughs> what purpose did that serve? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, yeah, head's so, gone. That was a proper head gone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, from his countless appearances in the league to him getting cold feet over whether he'd mar- marry Hill's star Kristen Cavallari. From his personal life to his professional life, uh, we, there's, there's, you just have to admire so much about Jay Cutler. He's, do indeed. He's, um, he's, he's living off his reputation. Um, I'm still not quite sure what his reputation is, but uh, <laughs> he's, he's managed to As build a, a career. Football coaches are the same the game over. The, literally, they, they will see that arm in practice, mm. and he'll, I imagine he just rips it. Yeah. There's people say that you can hear the ball coming when yeah. he throws it. Like the revs he puts on it, like he just and you just think, oh, I must be able to harness this. Yeah, they basically become infatuated with the arm. <laughs> yeah. But as Tom Brady's shown, it's um, it's it's probably more about what's above the neck than what's below it. Yeah, quarterbacking in the NFL, absolutely. Um, but yes, that was our ode to Jay Cutler, and uh, yeah, I hope I hope that now explains to sort of people who know us why we have such a sort of infatuation with Cutler. <laughs> an affection for him. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. exactly, long standing. Yeah. Next on the quarterback carousel, we discuss a very interesting situation in in my team's city, Kansas City. Yep. Alex Smith has fallen off the radar a bit, and Chiefs fans are absolutely clamouring for Patrick Mahomes. Um, I know how I feel about this and I know I believe you've done some reading this week and some have some interesting points to make on perhaps why the Chiefs have fallen off uh, so spectacularly and if if it really is all on Alex Smith because I, I don't believe it is but uh, I mean he's making he's making poor decisions um, and he's making a lot more throws that are forced they feel forced the reason the reason he's doing that though in my view is that the pressure i mean i was watching uh the nfl.com um it will probably still be on the website at this time they've they've done uh, a piece about you know is it all is it all alex smith's fault and they showed six or seven plays where the pass protection um yes my favorite my favorite hobby horse once again offensive line play in the nfl mm. um he's getting knocked around um yeah. and when you put i think i think what's it, i think it's somewhere in the middle it's not Alex all Alex Smith's fault, and it's not you can't absolve him of blame. Yeah, he he's been yeah. put under significant pressure by poor blocking. Eric Fisher was drafted in the top five to be an All Pro left tackle. Um, he's not providing that level of play. I think potentially in the right situation, quick rhythm offense, he could be a right tackle. Mm. But um, he's the the best pass rusher on the opposition team is always getting to Alex Smith at the minute, which you want to set out in the again to you know to 
to look at Bill Belichick, don't let their best player beat you. Yeah. And their best pass rusher is always beating the Chiefs at the minute. It's not even like they're they're even slowing them down. Um, yeah. And and it's just it's a situation where he's when he as soon as he gets rattled, Alex Smith, he really goes. His mm. head can really go. Um, and I mean, we've seen Tom Brady in Super Bowls get knocked around, and it it throws him off. So you, I mean, that's not a it's not a real diss on Alex Smith. No. But I think you have to understand that in that in this situation, it hasn't just been it hasn't just been a one man a one no. performance. Obviously, I, I remember when we were discussing his MVP credentials. Uh... We actually mentioned that some of the interior linemen for the Chiefs had been injured after that week, so it was week five when they were five and zero, and it does it does play a factor when you have journeymen guards and tackles who have to come in, oh, not yeah. not prepared. I mean, obviously Eric Fisher is not great, but you know if the interior linemen on there either, then I mean that brings us on to another point with the Chiefs offense. Kareem Hunt averaging three yards a carry after those first six games, he was yep. averaging six over yep. six, so. Yep. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. So I mean, it's it's. I mean, it's the people that nobody knows. The the interior offensive linemen. I mean, that's. I mean, that's where you get rushing yardage from. Yeah. By and large, by yeah. and large, you can get some of it through maybe if you've got a mobile quarterback like Alex Smith or some some deception. Yeah. But for the most part, you need to be able to hit plunge plays, dive plays inside a defense in the NFL. Yeah. You're not going to beat teams on the outside every week, and you know it. These things maybe to to us as casual fans we can sometimes overlook mm. um, unless we start looking at it in more in depth as to why teams become less efficient yeah. sometimes it is poor coaching and poor play calling yeah. you, you don't get the sense that's ever the case with Andy Reid you get the sense that the Chiefs will always be ultra well prepared but have they got the personnel to execute um, mm. no probably not And but what I will say again I'm not totally absolving Alex Smith I, you do look at it sometimes and you think Patrick Mahomes is probably too raw to play in his rookie year. But if a player like that was in with with some experience under his belt, would that player be able to play at a higher level than Alex Smith is playing at the minute? We can't say that definitely about Patrick Mahomes because we haven't seen him play yet. But a player of that type who's still mobile but has a an improvisational streak mm. um, can make throws from weird platforms like on like off his back foot, like being forced out of the pocket. Yeah. He's almost kind of like designed to play without a brilliant offensive line, if you know what I mean. From from all appearances, that is a kind of player that I think the Chiefs are going to have to go to. And as I've as I've said previously on this podcast, I, I think he will be the quarterback next year, Patrick Mahomes of the the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, there was a bit of speculation after Smith's uh, sort of MVP run at the start of the season, but yeah, it's by by all accounts, I think Mahomes will be there starting next season. I just think to to clamour for him now is is ridiculous. Oh no, and I. I do wonder if some people are maybe too close to it and just Im- immediately pa- paint the blame on Alex Smith but for these problems. Before everyone loses their mind, I will point out they're still leading the AFC West. Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they can still, you know, they can still win. They can still get into the playoffs quite comfortably still yeah. um, if they can get some of these things fixed. Yeah. Um, and you're not going to risk that. While they're still in contention for playoffs, you're not going to play a rookie quarterback that you perceived, and no. to be honest, everybody that saw him play in college perceived is not ready yet to play in the NFL. Yeah. That's a ridiculous thing to say. No, yeah. Um, it, uh, yeah. I, that, that is just totally, it's total overreaction. The thing with Alex Smith as well is when he's had good running backs and good weapons, he, he has done it. I remember the Colts wildcard game, Chiefs are winning that about... 45 to 20 at one point Jamal Charles goes off gets injured you have to go to the backup running back and the whole thing just went down it went it went to shit basically um you know, this season he's he started well with uh weapons like Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey but I'm, I'm not sure he has any other weapons to go to those those are two good weapons but they're the only weapons and it, I'm, he's, he's not a he's not an all-star quarterback he's not just going to make it happen by himself so but from what I've seen, when Alex Smith has the right tools around him, and you know the right O line pre- protection, he he's shown me more than enough to think that he can take a team to the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. You've got to look at the general manager. Jeremy Macklin was on that football team. Mm. Yeah. I mean, he's doing nothing in Baltimore, but no one's doing anything in Baltimore because yeah. Joe Flacco is no longer a legitimate NFL quarterback. Yeah. So. Jeremy Macklin, I think he put up 700, 800 yards receiving last year, a few touchdowns. Yeah. 
He was an effective he's, player. He's not I mean, okay. He's he not catches, an all-star. He catches everything that's thrown to him. He's not an all-star, but no. he does the stuff in the intermediate and the short areas of the field that Tyreek Hill mm. doesn't want to do. Tyreek no. Hill wants to beat you over the top. Yeah. He'll, go, he'll take, a, he'll take a, um, a jet sweep or a bubble screen yeah. for you from time to time. Yeah. But really, you want him on deep posts, that sort of, you know, that sort of play, streaks. Jeremy Macklin was a sort of a cleanup guy in the intermediate. Absolutely. Um, running a lot of the stuff, for example, Alshon Jeffries running in Philadelphia now, which is the same playbook that is being run in Kansas City for the yeah. most part. You know, Doug Peterson, Doug Peterson's from that that school. Mm. And a lot of the criticism that's been leveled at the Chiefs offense is that they can't play a cover two defense. As soon as teams sit back in a cover two, they've got no options. Well, Jeremy Macklin would be a perfect option. To just sit down in his own. Yeah, well, throw ex- balls at. experience at wide receiver, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so look, look where where's the hole? Sit down, a little button hook or something. Sit down in there, first down, move the sticks. Yeah, let's keep going. Exactly. And also, the great thing about that is that's you can someone like Jeremy Macklin you can rely on for a short rhythm passing game. He's played in the West Coast offense his entire NFL career. Yeah, um, and that is something where you wouldn't have to hold the ball as long. Protection becomes less important, which the Chiefs are struggling to do at the minute. Smith gets hit a lot less. Better results. Yeah. You know, so there's there's a there's a lot of different ways that you can explain this, other than saying. I mean, I don't think any, I don't think either of us think it is purely Alex Smith's fault. I think it's just hysteria. No, from yeah, the fan base. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a bit sad to see that sort of culture of the fan base. Really, um, obviously, people in Kansas City are very very attached to their team, and maybe oh, their great their, fans. their opinions. Yeah, great fans. Maybe maybe their opinions. I remember when I was over there for Halloween. Actually, I uh, I taped a, a Tom Brady. Uh, sign over my Jamal Charles jersey. Uh, put put the, the Brady name over the jersey, and uh, a few Chiefs fans were uh, not very impressed. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, the bouncers had to get involved at one point. They, they were uh, a real uh, took it as a real offence to their football team. Uh, I mean, this was for Halloween. I should point out. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, 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 I, I should preclude it with that. It was I was I was Tom Brady for Halloween. I see. Yeah. I, I I hadn't I hadn't gathered the context. Yeah, uh, yeah. They were they they still did not get the joke. Okay. Um, <laughs> not not yeah. Not saying they're wrong like that, but yeah, it's a, it's a bit of hysteria. It's a bit of a tendency to overreact, and you know the Chiefs are still in the hunt. You see it with all sports fans, but I mean, yeah. it's almost. I mean, I'm sure they were. You know, they were winning year in year out before Alex Smith went there, right? <laughs> no, I mean exactly. I mean, it says it all, doesn't it? Yep. Um, another team that's in the hunt and another quarterback on our carousel as we spin you around is Philip Rivers and the Chargers. A much improved Chargers team. Uh, both of us are big fans of Philip Rivers, not just because of his shouting matches with Jay Cutler, but we do admire Rivers' abrasive personality, shall we say? Swagger. Yeah. It, it's it's one of the ugliest throw emotions in any in any form of football. It mm. really is. He just gets it out of his hand however he needs to get it out there. You wouldn't teach anyone... And there were people. He went in the first round in that famous uh, that famous Manning trade. Manning trade, which we'll, switcheroo. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about as this section mo- segment moves along. But he gets it done sometimes, just on pure guts, pure will. Throws a brilliant deep ball as mm-hmm. well. Um, and and they're streaking. They've they've won. Um, I believe they've won four in a row now. Uh, five and six. So still under five hundred. Not quite back leading the division yet, but they would be my pick at the minute out of the AFC West. I think they're going to get there. I think they're going to get there and do it. Mm, yeah. uh, the Broncos are nowhere. The Raiders have an incomplete roster and the Chiefs, as we've discussed, are having their issues. Yeah. But yeah, he's 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 playing fantastic at the minute. And my... yeah, I mean, a lot of people um, talk about Stafford's ability to get the ball out from, say, he can make all the throws from any position. And, and people don't mention Rivers in that same sort of bracket, which is a bit yeah. funny because they're, they're almost identical, actually, to me as quarterbacks. I mean, Matthew Stafford does have a very classical throwing action from a what? Well, because well, a lot of people talk about platforms, don't they? Like mm. throwing platforms. So from just a normal, normal pocket, Matt Stafford throws it, but he will throw these crazy sidearm, like almost like baseball pitches out yeah. of the side of his. I think that's where it comes below from. his waist sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's where it comes from with both of these guys. Actually, is a baseball, a pitching background. Yeah. Um, but, Texas boys, yeah, yeah. Rivers will just throw this side ball with some loop on it. Sometimes mm. he just like he just lofts it in there. It's yeah. majestic. I yeah. love it. <laughs> I can tell you, you're, you're getting uh, you're getting quite hot under the collar there, Mike. I really, oh really yeah, enjoy no, speaking I do. I, I, yeah. I just love it. And as I say, well, you look at his numbers. Um, he's, I mean, he's he's leading Dan Fouts now on the Chargers all time, um, all time list. I mean, Dan Fouts won a championship for the Chargers, but 
Yeah. You know, I mean, that's some company to keep. As, as I said earlier in the podcast, in my books, he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, he is, um, yeah, definitely. A similarity to Alex Smith in a way that at times he's had no weapons at all. Oh, and, okay. and well, when he's when he's had a Ladanian Tomlinson, you see it now with Keenan Allen as well, when he has these genuine threats. They ran into the buzzsaw, which was the 03 and the 04 New England Patriots, which yeah. is potentially two of the greatest teams well, in the history of the league, yeah. really. They're, they're in the top 20 best teams of all time. Oh, absolutely for me. That, yeah. that early Brady era, there's no shame in losing to that Patriots team. No, they had the defense then as well. Yeah. Really, a, a mean defense there, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, when he's when he's had the, the tools at his disposal, it's, it's not all just on the court of that. You have to have help. Yeah, oh, and it's getting getting uh, Keenan Allen back. Yeah. At wide receiver. Massive. Missed the best part of two years through injury. I mean, just horrendous luck with injuries. Mm. Um, I think it might have been ACLs in each knee. Yeah. Um, back to back years, but you just see he made one play last week where he caught a little set, a little sit down route, just easy something really short, and he just weaved through the entire defense. Just, yeah. Just like from like going from like one side of the field all the way to the other and ran it in. It was a great. It was a great open field run. Yeah. Um, off a short pass and, against uh, America's team. Yes, yeah. I mean that you can tell in my voice how much I enjoyed uh, it. Oh yeah, I, I saw a little spike there come up on the monitor. Yeah, it's always good to watch the cowgirls <laughs> flop on national TV. Um, and uh, well, actually, it's an, it's an exciting amount of talent around. They've got Mike Williams out of uh, Clemson, uh, the big fella. Talk about under the radar. People yeah, forget that, he, that he, next season. Once he's more familiar with that playbook, he's had he had the injury as well. So once he comes he's back, the fully, um, um, Melvin Gordon as well, running like he did back, back in the Big Ten days. Yeah, their issue, their issue is going to be when they come up against um, when they come up against hardier opposition is their offensive line. Again, I know I, I I seem to find myself talking about this with every team, but it is it genuinely for the Chargers for the LA Chargers, it's a serious problem. Yeah. They haven't got they've got protection issues. I mean, the Eagles went there and absolutely dismantled them on their own field. Mm. So if they end up having if they have to go to a, a team with a similar quality defense, they'll be one and done in the playoffs. Eve. But yeah. that that would actually be considering the way they started. That would actually be yeah. a uh, you'd actually have to say all things considered, you'd have to take that as a good season for them. Yeah, that'd be massive. Uh, a team that hasn't had a good season. As we spin you around the quarterback carousel, we're going to discuss Eli Manning and the New York Giants. The New York football giants. Um, uh, probably the biggest flop of the year. Uh, probably, <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely appalling football team who still be the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, admittedly. Um, Eli Manning has now been benched and Geno Smith is going to take the reins. Uh, it's, it's hard to say if it's the end for Eli Manning, but maybe it should be the end for Eli Manning. That might be a little strong. I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's the end for Eli Manning. I also wouldn't bench him for Geno Smith. I mean, no. You, I mean, you know what Geno Smith gives you. And it's, yeah. It's nothing. Special. Yeah. Nothing special. Yeah, and I'm. I'm going to actually. Much people. I'm sure people appreciate it. I'm going to get away from talking about offensive line with the Giants, and it would actually be receivers. Mm, yeah. You look at the weapons that have gone down for the Giants. All of their outside receivers have gone down. Every single one. So, um, Sterling Shepard's just come back. But yeah. you know everybody. Everybody else is going down injured. Odell Beckham Jr. Obviously, as much as we, um, as much as we don't like to admit it, you and me, um, he he is he's a top five wide receiver in the NFL. He changes how you have to play the New York Giants on in every single way. You have to double Absolutely. him the entire game, which opens everything else up. Um, and I think that's a massive loss. That but and. It just seems like McAdoo is trying to, who is, you know, the Giants coach, is trying to pin it on anybody else he can think of. He's just scapegoating now. Yeah. Which is, I mean, <laughs> this guy this guy is just grossly incompetent. He, he, seems, he seems totally overwhelmed by the responsibility of being in charge of such a, like, proud franchise in the league. Absolutely, yeah. It seems way too big for him. Yeah, he's, uh, he can't control the big names in that locker room. He's I literally... Mean, we've, we've harped on about it before, but... Before that playoff game in the wild card last year, when they took the boat down to Miami, those those Giants receivers, yeah, and then were warming up without shirts on in the freezing cold at the yeah. to Lambeau Field. Yeah, they've 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 sort of what they've done is they've what they said they wanted to do when Coughlin left was we'll just promote from within, drop somebody into that head coaching role, yeah, and things will carry on 
broadly similarly and then hopefully we'll update it in a little bit because Coughlin it started to feel a bit stale it started to feel a bit old school a bit draconian but it hasn't worked at all I mean like like Pedersen what what Peterson's done with the Eagles is they brought an inexperienced an equally inexperienced coach in don't forget the Eagles wanted McAdoo over Doug Peterson Mm. we couldn't we couldn't get him and what what we what the Eagles I should stop saying we I apologise what the Eagles have done instead is bring in experienced coordinators. So um, uh, DiFilippo um, on the offensive side, quarterback's background to help grow Carson Wentz, and has also been a coordinator in the league. Yeah, they've also Jimmy Schwartz been a head coach in the league. Yeah, strong That's personality. One of my and favorite signings that one. That was D- wonderful. Dave Phipp on the special teams, probably the best special teams coordinator in the league. So Doug, all all Doug Peterson has to do is just over is like just run the ship. Yeah. Get everybody working at an optimal level and keep the thing moving. And it's it seems to be such a... The, the New York Giants have gone away from trying to do anything like that. It's, yeah. it's just rudderless, totally rudderless yeah, at the minute. Definitely. Um, but obviously it's all Eli Manning's fault. It's, it's ridiculous. It's farcical. And we're, we're going to see we're gonna see the next instalment of the Geno Smith show, mm. which nobody ever wanted to see again. No, I thought it, uh, it had been put on ice, shall we say, um... In New York again. The city uh, of New York has seen too much Geno Smith. Yeah, I thought it was being put on ice when he got knocked out by his teammate for not turning up to that football camp. Um, <laughs> that, was unbelie- but, um, <laughs> that was unbelievable. His own but, teammate yeah. broke his jaw. Yeah, uh, we will see him again, sadly. Um, but is, yeah, Eli Manning, I think he should be done. I, I don't think the way he's been playing, he, he can get back to any respectable level now where he can take a team to a Super Bowl. Okay, but let me let me let me throw something at you though, like Denver Broncos. Mm. I mean, a team like that where I think he does a much better job than any of the quarterbacks they have on their roster. Yeah, I don't, um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't think he's done. I think he could be done in New York. I think maybe they're they're going to be they're going to have a top five pick. Yeah, and they'll they'll make moves to go up if they need to to get if they really like Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold. Lamar Jackson, if they've got a good feeling about any one of those guys at the top of the draft, you could probably get Mayfield and Lamar Jackson at five. You wouldn't even have to move up. Yeah. It, I mean, I think they could potentially go that way. Um, yeah, I mean, they could. It's it's a lot of romanticizing to think about Manning at the Broncos, Manning at the Jaguars, though. Some, the reality is sometimes the, with the salary cap and what they're paying players already is that these, these things just don't sort of materialize. I hadn't thought of that. I can see that happening. Eli Manning to the Jaguars. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's, I, it's I can, one that popped into my mind when I was thinking about it. That I is just, a great shout. That mm. is that is a great call. I can definitely see that happening. He is a much better quarterback than Blake Bortles. Oh, he is, yeah. He gives you a lot more efficiency, and they've got all the pieces around them. Yeah. Need some work on the offensive line still, but they've got the rest of the pieces around them there. Yeah. That's a great shout. And obviously, reunion, Tom well, Coughlin, Tom obviously, Goffin, he's won yeah. two Super Bowls with the guy. I mean, he, yeah. he, he will back him to succeed. Yeah. Oh, I could see that happening. I could see that happening. For me, I'm not sure the fire's there in the belly. But yeah, we'll see. It's, it's probably too early to call it. I just I, think... Yeah. If that does happen, I'm calling for that to be a success. Okay. I'll, I'll disagree with you on this. Interesting. And now to the final stop on the QB carousel. A comeback story, potentially, for Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, I hadn't realised they'd um, placed him on IR. That doesn't mean that he can't come back this season. It means there is a deadline by which he has to come back by... Yeah. Um. Uh, he has to be out for a certain, so two more weeks. He has to be out for basically. Um. The Green Bay Packers play the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they play the Cleveland, the winless Cleveland Browns. Yeah. I mean the these Packers, man. They they they've at the minute they're above five hundred. Yeah. They're six and five. You can it's you can argue that both of those teams can be beaten without a quarterback at yeah. the minute. The the Buccaneers don't have their all star quarterback. No. And the Browns have oh, the, the Browns Kaiser the Browns. quarterback. Yeah. So, so I, it would potentially look at a Packers team that's eight and five, and then they have to play the Bears, I believe, and the Lions uh, yeah. with a healthy Rogers. Yeah, uh, it can well, conceivably be. I mean, what is he going to be? He's going to be eighty percent or something. But eighty yeah. percent of Aaron Rodgers, who I think you know, as much as you and me have talked about it before, we love Tom Brady. We think he's the goat. Um, I think Aaron Rodgers, in, that I've seen, football that I've seen played, obviously there's people that came before, but yeah. 
he's the most naturally gifted quarterback I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, um, definitely. The, 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 my time watching football. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see it. I'd love to. I could. It, it would be so similar to the year they won the mm, Super Bowl. Yeah, it would be so to him him having to come back from an injury and then them just getting hot and going on a streak. Yeah, and getting into the getting into the playoffs. And, uh, um I mean that'd be a that'd be a hell of a game seeing the uh, seeing the Packers come into the Lincoln Financial Field. Oh. For a divisional game, You're salivating over it already. There, I am. Yeah, I mean, obviously, that's very, that's very long-term thinking. Obviously, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see if that pans well, out. Know, they always plan for the long term, Mike. No, exactly. That's, that's what they say. Well, that's the great thing about being a Philadelphia Eagles fan at the minute. We, you can start planning into uh, planning into January. Mm. And uh, now we've sort of spun you around the quarterback carousel. We're going to move on to the always popular. Spreads of the week brought to us by Anchor Spreadable, the free range butter company. First up, we have uh, the Denver Broncos going to Miami. Uh, Jay Cutler's former team against Jay Cutler's current team. Um, this is a fun fact the uh, Cutler Bowl. <laughs> the cu- <laughs> well, one might say the Jay, test- the Jay Cutler testimonial. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Retire that number six jersey. <laughs> and uh, the Broncos, two point favourites here. Um, it's a tough one with these Broncos because every week I sort of think the secondary is going to shut down these mediocre quarterbacks, but they don't seem to be able to do it. The Bengals had the, had a, a bit of fun with them. <laughs> They're on the field too long. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that is a really good defense for me. It's a top five unit in the league yeah. with the personnel they've got. They just on the field the entire time. Yeah. I mean, Paxton Lynch last week. I mean, what was that? That was an absolute aberration. I mean, it has what? to be one of the worst first round draft picks I've seen in my time. And I mean, he, he showed nothing. And then he started crying on the bench. Yeah. Did you see this? Yeah. I mean, look, I, d- I don't want to seem insensitive. I mean, obviously, that is upsetting. But you could... I mean, that's not sort of showing the character that an NFL... Yeah. I mean, this Are is... you looking at that guy as a leader? This is a, it's a dog-eat-dog world in the NFL. You yeah. can't, be, <laughs> yeah. can't be crying on the bench when you get benched. I mean, yeah. that is very, very strange. Um, no, I, I think... I, th- I, I would personally take the Dolphins outright to win that game. Yeah, I, I mean, think the Broncos are completely a... capitulated. Oh, they have, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit torn here. This, it's and a short it, spread. I mean, I don't know what you think, but that strikes me as just like the personalities they've got there. Is I think that would be a very difficult locker room to hold together if it wasn't going well. Yeah, when definitely. you've got like Von Miller, Aqib Talib, like yeah. these really outspoken guys. Yeah. And then you've got Elway piping up saying the team are soft. Yeah. I think that's... It's definitely a case of defense over offense. Yeah, of, it's all combusted. A, you know, split down the middle. Yeah. I no, I think I yeah. As I say, for me, it's Miami outright. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll begrudgingly take that. I think yeah, it's probably time I stopped backing the Denver defense to do anything. So yeah, Miami, Detroit Lions going to the Ravens. Um, this is a strikes me as a funny one because the Ravens are favored by three. Um, they have been playing better football maybe than we've been given the credit for, but ugh, this Lions team is, is too good. The Lions win. The- yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I, the, I saw articles this a couple of different things about the Ravens this week, tweets and stuff saying they're a, they're a, they're an AFC dark horse. Um, yeah, they're a very, very dark horse for me. I mean, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't like this team at all. No. Um, the, the, the defense is very good again, which is credit, credit to them. That is, it is a good defense, but. Yeah, I believe your your brothers stumbled upon a, a, a fantasy football formula for success. I believe they've had two shutouts this season. Yeah, uh, in our league, that generates an awful lot of points. So yeah, a guy that isn't even really playing, yeah, is managing to generate thirty points off a, a <laughs> fantasy defense, which for those of you that don't play is a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, so they're playing very well. But um, I mean, uh, unless Joe Flacco and and actually. The reason why this wrong reason, one reason why this makes sense to me, is that he will just randomly get hot for no reason and start slinging the ball around. Yeah, that's true. Um, if he does that, they'll do well. But I, I mean, it's going to be a close game either way you look at it. The Lions aren't going to run away with it if they win. So, well, no, the Lions will go down early, and Stafford will have to bring <laughs> them back and win in the fourth quarter, which yeah. is how they win every game since he's been there. Yeah. That that stat that um, we heard last week, I think you. You you picked it up as well with regards to the running game in Detroit it was amazing. We'll just we'll just mention that while we're talking about Detroit. Yeah, since Matthew Stafford was drafted in two thousand eight, they've had five one hundred yard rushes. I mean, I know it's the last a, one was Reggie Bush in two thousand thirteen. I know it's a committee 
backfield approach, but that's yeah, that's woeful. <laughs> that's, that's woeful. Yeah, well, you talk about quarterbacks not having support as another, well, yeah. yeah, another. And example. he's had horrendous offensive line play until this season yeah. when they've sorted it out. They have sorted out. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's having his best year statistically. Yeah, surprise, um, surprise. So yeah, lines. We'll, we'll take the lines on that. Uh, a bizarre spread that they're not favourites there. Uh, the Houston Texans are going to the Titans, and the Texans come in as seven point underdogs. I'm not sure if I want to take the Texans here. This this could be a risky one to take them, but the the, the Titans not playing great no. football. You talk about teams that could be the dark horse, another very dark horse here. Um, they they might even leave the stable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they. I mean, they haven't bolted yet, have they? No. Um, it's they're very, very strange team for me. The Titans. I mean, I think you might. Sh- should even... they do more? Yes. With with the players they have, with, they with should, the talent yeah. they've got, yeah. I, 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 I think. think so. I mean, they've got they've got the best offensive line in the league, other than probably the Eagles at the minute. I'd mm. say. Um, they've got a quarterback who is very talented. Uh, played really well last year. They've got weaponry. They've got a defense. Yeah. Um, and. I would really like this team on paper, and I I think that is potentially a spot where you could see some some coaching. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think if you got somebody got a, a, a hot a hot offensive name came available, mm. I think the Titans would probably have to go for it. Yeah, like it would be good. It'll be can you imagine to see a Sean McVay taking? I mean, uh, someone similar to Sean McVay taking control of that offense. My my shout, Josh McDaniels. Mm. It's about time he threw his name into the hat for a head coaching job, maybe. Yeah, yeah, he can't just sit under Belichick's wing forever. No. but And he is, in his own right, an ingenious play caller. Can yeah. you imagine what he could do with Mariota yeah. and those running backs? Yeah. That could be nice. That's uh, You're calling that one early. and that's, Calling uh, that one early. Oh, that and is, I, that's I a can dark horse see, coaching call. I can see yeah, that happening. Definitely, yeah. Interesting. Um, Off topic, but... <laughs> well, yes. Uh, <laughs> on the spread, uh, I'll, I'll take the Texans. Go on. Give me seven, I'll take them. Yeah, no, you know what? Titans aren't playing well enough. Mm. Texans cover. Yeah. And then uh, another one, the AFC South. Uh, the Colts are going to the Jaguars. Uh, the Colts, nine and a half point underdogs. I think we're both taking the Colts here. That's, uh, have, that's I, a lot of points to give a team. I, I, we, I mean, we need to look at this because have the Jaguars won a game by more than a touchdown this uh, season? Well, they destroyed the Ravens in the UK game. Oh yeah, by forty-one <laughs> points. Yeah, uh, which which is a sort of you can't really count that in terms of. That. Well, that's an aberration. Yeah. because they just didn't turn up. Yeah, but I mean, how they, that's not uh, how I mean, they the, win the games. Jaguars, they beat the Browns by more than seven, just so uh, okay. I believe that might be the only other one. But you think about how they're built to win games. Mm. Hammer the hammer the the ball with with your running backs, and yep. d- please don't make us throw it too much with Blake Balls. Yeah, we're begging you, don't make it. Th- so they're not they're never going to blow anybody out. I think that's a strange spread. I'm definitely taking the plucky Indianapolis Colts yeah. to cover that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my Casey Chiefs are going to the Jets here. Um, the spread was... You've a got bit... a bad feeling about this one. Yeah, I mean, the spread was, I believe it started the week at five points for the Chiefs. It's come down to three points, and that shows me that people are piling in on these Jets to cover, uh, which, I mean, I, I hate to say, but you know, on past performances, the Jets cover this one and probably win it. No, nope. unless we, unless we, no, no, nope. okay. I, I, I don't think this one's close. I, I think the Jets are progressing, mm. um, but I actually think the Chiefs might just start get out to get, the funk. They might, yeah, and they might set up which I, what, well, because well, for me, for me, it's this is more hope than expectation. Yeah. But I think that would set up a Titanic race down the straight with the Chargers. Yeah, uh, down the back straight with the Chargers to get into the playoffs. I'd love to see it. I think, I think the Chiefs beat them comfy this week. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. I I did actually call the Giants covering the spread. I know the you Chiefs. did. Uh, I know you did. Yeah, I, I, have I, a, had, I, I had I had ominous feelings. I had the Giants getting whipped as yeah. well, but it didn't happen. <laughs> um, but you know, I'm I'm staying faithful for okay. Big Andy. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. About the wars. Yeah. Uh, when when times get cold, just trust the wars. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the Minnesota Vikings uh, go to the Falcons. A really nice game here. Um, and the Vikings come in as three point underdogs. Um, it's, it's a short spread, but I'd be tempted to go with the Vikings here. I think they've got the weapons on defense to shut down the Falcons. Falcons have a rejuvenated running game. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I actually, uh, no, I wouldn't. I no? Would, no, back at Atlanta on this side. So, Domefield. Yeah, and, and I think they're 
they're sort of um, I believe it's in Minnesota, isn't it? No. Oh, is it really? Is yeah, it, is Vikings. It, is, it, is, it in, is it in Georgia? Yes, yeah, so they're playing two games in a row at uh, Mercedes Benz Stadium. They've got the SEC Championship game ah, there today. So, so okay. The turf okay. might be uh, torn up a bit there. Uh, they, they have a retract- retractable field. Oh, do they? Yeah. Uh, That's one of the reasons why, because they have to have loads of college games there. Ah, uh, okay. Stupid that I know that. And um, <laughs> so, no, I, I think I think that the the Falcons are getting into something now. Julio Jones last week, that, that play was so mm. fun last week. Mohamed yeah. Sanu... Uh, wide rec- in case you don't know him he's wide receiver um, but he's probably got the best arm of a wide receiver to have played in the NFL I think I'd, say, like, I'd say yeah he's, he's thrown, thrown six for six yeah, yeah. he's hit three all, touchdowns three touchdowns yeah he's that's got the perfect passer rating a perfect passer rating, rating yeah. for Mohamed Sanu yeah and they hit a beauty the stuff Madden Jones. dreams are made of uh, yeah, yeah yeah I mean I mean, there, I mean there are there's quite a few quarterbacks that would envy his deep arm strength in the league. He can yeah. really get it down the field. I don't know if only Travis Kelsey could throw one like that. And that seemed to... It was strange. That play got them so excited. That yeah. It kicked their entire... It, suddenly yeah. the 2016 Falcons offense came yeah, back. That's, Julio that's Jones point. had 250 yards receiving. They may have awoken the beast there. Yeah. And, this is a good Vikings team. Though, yeah, but they've beaten some good teams. They're due a loss to a good team. Well, that's true. I'm just saying, I think... A I, close loss, though, which is why I'll take him on the spread. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's a nugget. Um, the Patriots go to the Bills. Uh, well, there could be some snow in this game. I haven't checked the weather report because uh, I don't really care much about Buffalo, but uh, <laughs> there, there could be some snow. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> a, few, a few short weeks ago. Oh, Buffalo the City. Talk- I don't care about Buffalo the City. Right. Okay. I, I thought you meant I, Buffalo the I, team. I, well, I would have said the Bills. Because you, you were big on the Bills. You uh, were big on the Bills. Yeah, but I mean, this is another, another coach that's probably going to get kicked. No. What? I mean, that was a ridiculous cause of bad change. We haven't actually spoken about this yet, have we? No. I mean, uh, what, what, what's more to say? Five interceptions in one half. Yeah. Oh, it's catastrophic. Yeah, um, Tyrod Taylor's not the answer to anything, but he's not, he's not going to hurt a team by playing no, Tyrod Taylor. No, I, I so. actually, the, the stuff that you hear coming out of um, Buffalo is that they love playing for him. Yeah. Uh, Sean McDermott, they love playing for him. Um, that the defense has been good, yeah. For as poor as the offense has been, um, they've got a um, they've they've got a system in there that they want to put in, mm. kind of a bit more like the Andy Reid system, a bit more West Coast quarterback that can throw it. I think if they can, they believe they can get that. Um, maybe yeah. they might be in dark horse again. Dark horse shout. Could they get involved in the the Kirk coupons debate? Yeah, well, we'd have to. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. if you put if you put a quarterback like that in on that team, mm. they look like a very different proposition. Absolutely, I agree. Yeah, they've gone out and got Kelvin Benjamin. He's he's out for this week again, so he's, he's never he hasn't suited up for them so far. I, this season. I think he's done enough already to have secured his job until next year, Sean McDermott. Yeah, I, that was just an awful call. It was a terrible call. They got blown out, but then they came back and won like, the next week. Yeah, like against the. Chiefs. I mean, that's yeah, but that's that's character. That's yeah. character, though. Yeah, and he's instilled it in them. I, I think no. I think you're, you're overreacting. Okay. Well, anyway, um, they're nine point underdogs. <laughs> oh, but, but, but but yeah, they're going to get beaten by more than nine points by the New England Patriots. I know. Well, unless okay, if it's a bad weather game, yeah. then of course not. It will be that's, that's yeah for, for the betters out there. That's probably one to monitor pregame. Monitor if you put any sort of like weather induced restriction on Tom Brady, then it makes it automatically a much closer game. So yeah, it will, yeah. for me it depends on the weather. Uh, yeah. Yeah, weather depending, maybe take the Bills and the nine points. Uh, the Niners going to the Bears. Uh, a bit of a toilet bowl affair, this one. Uh, a bit of interest for me, though. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy G's first start. Oh, okay, Jimmy yeah. Garoppolo. Um, yeah. I like him, actually. Yeah. I saw yeah, him play he... for the Patriots. He's got that really quick release, compact mm. release. He's a, he's a really fun player to watch in the two starts that I've seen him have. Yeah. Um, so he, he might be a, a bit of a contrast to the struggling Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, there was a, there was some chat going on last week, mostly by Charles Davis, who was commenting on the game, comparing him to Carson Wentz. Um, Carson Wentz actually, for all the criticism he got, didn't have that bad a rookie campaign. Mitchell Trubisky, mm. he makes some good, fr- he makes some beautiful throws sometimes, mm. but he make he makes some really airheaded decisions sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You just look at it and think, what were you even looking at? Yeah. And you didn't really see that with Carson Wentz very often as a rookie. No, no, no. I don't think you can compare the two. For me, I no. think that might... I'm um, not sure Trubisky has it between the years. I I totally agree. Yeah. 
He came <laughs> from a very simplistic college offense. Mm. The North Carolina, the Tar Heels, they play very... And he ran it for one year. Ran as so, a starter. Yeah. C- couldn't couldn't um, couldn't get the, uh, the... Couldn't supplant the starter. No. Who was like a dual, <laughs> who's like a dual threat guy. He wasn't really much of a thrower. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. So, isn't, yeah. I mean, um, maybe it's too soon to say Mitchell Trubisky will rival Paxton Lynch for one of the worst <laughs> no. draft selections, but no, but I, yeah, he's got to show us a bit more down the stretch, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. no, Mitchell, Mitchell, yeah, Mitchell Trubisky can be a player in the league. I just don't think he's worthy of a top ten pick. No. No, but then nobody did. No, no, that's true. Uh, well, anyway, uh, the Bears are th- favored by three. Probably like the Niners to cover in a close Yeah, no, gimme Jimmy G. Yeah. Gimme Jimmy G. Absolutely. For for the win. Two throws last week, two completions and a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. Gimme Jimmy G. And the Buccaneers are going to the Packers, uh, as we discussed, potentially one for the Packers to win, and they are favoured by two and a half points. I'll, I'll probably take the Packers. It's going to be a cold game again. The Buccaneers same as might for not me. get up for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, same as for me. Buccaneers going into, in, into the Midwest, um, freezing cold, uh, and the romanticism of that that it's just that's going to happen like they're going to get a shot of getting in the playoffs yeah. I just I just see it happening yeah um, the Browns are going to the Chargers and one of the largest spreads the Browns have had for a while um, it's nice to see him back in the double digits uh, 13 and a <laughs> half point underdogs uh, it's, it's a tough one because you want to take the Browns on this but could it be a blowout I'm, I'm, I'm a bit torn I think this one you do take the Browns. Yeah. The Chargers... I'm tempted to say if it was in Cleveland, I would, because again, you have the yeah. weather down in they LA. Play up, they play up in Cleveland. They yeah. do. They do the for the, in front of the home fans, yeah, yeah, they do play a lot better. But I just don't... The Chargers don't blow anyone out. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. It, it's one of these... It's like with the Jags, I can never take them... Well, I mean, they blew, oh, they blew Dallas out quite comfortably. Well, that's true. Mm. Yeah. Maybe then. But I just, I mean, obviously, if if it was my money, I wouldn't touch this. But no. if you're telling me I have to put money on it, um, I'm going to take the Browns to cover personally. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah I'll, it tempts me. I'll take it. Yeah, um, the Panthers going to New Orleans Saints. Uh, this is a uh, one of the later games, and really the crop of these later fixtures. Um, I assume it'll be live, and I assume you and me will both be watching this one quite eagerly. Yeah, absolutely. Panthers going as five and a half point underdogs. Yeah. It will probably be close. Yeah. A contrast of styles. Well, actually not so much because the Saints have got that ground game going. Uh, in the years, seasons past, it will be a contrast of styles, but mm-hmm. maybe two very evenly matched teams here. Yeah. And I think um, I think the Saints will bounce back. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I like them to take this division still, the Saints. I know the Panthers are uh, rallying. They're playing better. That defense is looking like pretty much like it did when they went to the Super Bowl again. Now, I mean, Luke Keekley is obviously getting him back in healthy is obviously the main reason behind that. Um, I, I think the Saints, disappointing last week in LA. Drew, Drew Brees didn't play well at all, which was strange. No, yeah. um, he, got, he got knocked around. Wade, Wade Phillips, old man, the old man River there, got, got the best of him. So I, I, I think potentially Brees has a better game and Saints for me. Yeah, they do enough to cover that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Rams are going to the Cardinals. You know, I like the Cardinals to cover this seven-point spread here. I've just got a feeling the Cardinals will, will get up in front of the home crowd and play a good game. I mean, Blaine Gabbert's playing better than I've ever seen yeah, him play. Yeah, playing his way into a contract somewhere. Oh, yeah, no, he's he's yeah no, he's made himself a tidy maybe yeah. couple of million dollars as a backup somewhere. Yeah. He's, look, he's looked respectable. Um, a shame they didn't go to him straight away, really. Yeah. Um, I... No, I, I don't think I've been more impressed by anyone than Sean McVay this season okay. um, and I, I think they they doubled they put a double di- hang a double digit win really? on, the, on the Cardinals yeah okay. I mean that that uh, offence is frightening sometimes yeah it is yeah absolutely uh, I, just, I just don't know on the road at Arizona divisional game the thing with divisional games is that they're often close so. from an Eagles perspective I'd like to see the char- uh, the the um, the Rams go down, so yeah. you know yeah. I want that home field advantage. So yeah, I hope you're right. I just don't see it. Okay, um, the Giants nine point underdogs the at G-Man. the Raiders. Uh, yeah, no, don't no. no <laughs> G- um, Geno Smith is quarterback in the Giants. Need I say any more? So take the yeah, yeah. That's that's a good point when you put it that way. Very very take meta, the, very simplistic. Uh, I'm taking the over. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, 
Philadelphia Eagles. Can, can I just ask, what what is the um, total amount of points there, the over under they're predicting on that? Uh, Forty one and a half. Forty one and a half. Yeah. Low. They they want they want low scoring, do they? Yeah. I'm taking the over in a blowout win for the Raiders. Yeah, that's, a, that's not a lot of points. No. No. Uh, yeah. Definitely take the over there. Yeah. Um, Sunday night football. Uh, the Eagles go to the Seahawks, and the Eagles are favoured uh, at uh, Seattle by I can five be- points. I saw that. I saw that today yeah. on Twitter. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, it's. I mean, if see if you're given Seattle five points at home, you'd be stupid not to take that. Yeah, for me. No, oh, I agree. Yeah. Now this is going to be a nasty, physical, tough yeah. game. This isn't going to be one where you look at it and go, oh. These are two of the best young quarterbacks in the league, which is what I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's, they might get knocked around a bit, to be honest. Yeah. Um, this will be the first test for um, Halapaluti Vitae, uh, left tackle for the Eagles. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jason Peters. I mean, these things aren't talked about with the Eagles, but we have, you know, the, the Hall of Famer Jason Peters has been missing for the mid, for eight, eight weeks now, yeah. six, seven weeks. Um, and this will be the first time that our team has got the, the brilliant edge threat to expose him mm. and we might see it and I think the Eagles make their first slip up okay. for a little little while here yeah yeah. Um, th- Eagles can still win for me they've still got that sort of mentality to, to play in these games and they've got the running game um, but Seahawks cover for me I think yeah so you're taking just so you're taking a an Eagles win though you think the Eagles will win in Seattle mm, no I'm just taking a spread no, I know, but I just I'm just trying to bring some in extra added. A wise man once said, "It's not about who wins or loses; it's, it's about who covers the spread." <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can't tell I'm from a betting background. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> um, and finally, we have the Steelers going to the Bengals. Um, a stellar the, Monday night football. Uh, yeah, as usual. Uh, the Steelers might make this hard for themselves. I think they're favoured by five. Bengals are playing better. Yeah. Be tempted. So this is a tempting one. Because the, the, the Steelers could just in two two drives just knock the, the Bengals out. But I'm not sure they will. Uh, Bengals cover for me. Yeah. Yeah, Bengals cover. Yeah. Uh, quite a few agreements this week. Quite a, a lovely civil week here at the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I mean, we can't we can't always disagree, Tom. No. no we, we talked about our love for Jay Cutler. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And it all, got, had a it, few all, agreements. it all got very affectionate <laughs> after that here in the... Here in here in your your uh, your family home. I think. Yes, and on that pleasant note, we conclude the spreads of the week. Brought to us by Anchor Spreadable. Cool. Thanks a lot for listening. As always, send in any queries or questions, anything you'd like us to debate in future podcasts. And it's been great to have you here. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.